Heart of Stone is Netflix's newest spy action film featuring Gal Gadot and missing a lot. The film seems to be a miss with most audiences, and I'd have to say I agree with the critics that point out the film's shallow characters, bland scenes, and generic plot that leaves it with a Walmart brand 007 vibe. But I also thought that there were a few neat scenes or details in the film, so let's take a look at some of them and some things you may have missed. And just a quick spoiler warning for the rest of the video. Starting, as always, by looking at the production, Heart of Stone, directed by Tom Harper, was released to Netflix on August 11th, 2023. The screenplay was written by Greg Rucka and Alison Schroeder, and the film stars Gal Gadot as Rachel Stone, Alia Bhatt as Kay Adwan, and Jamie Dornan as Parker. The cast also features Matthias Shkweguva as the Jack of Hearts, Jing Lucy as Yang, Paul Reddy as Bailey, and Sofia Oconedo as Nomad. Filming then began in the Alpine Arena Sinales on January 6, 2020, followed by London that March. Then, the second schedule of filming took place in Reykjavik, Iceland in April, after which production moved back to London in May. Finally, the filming in Lisbon, Portugal took place in July, with film wrapping on July 28, 2022. Now, just to give a quick overview of the film, Heart of Stone follows Rachel Stone, an agent known as Nine of Hearts for a top-secret organization called The Charter. The Charter has a very powerful and sophisticated piece of artificial intelligence called The Heart, which can predict the future and can remotely access any other piece of technology in the world. The Charter uses The Heart to guide its agents in their missions and to keep peace around the world, but following AI leads them to make some decisions that aren't as moral or creative as a decision that an actual person would make. Stone Joan highlights this flaw in the system in the very first scene when her parachute gets stuck leading the heart to give her a near 0% chance of success, but she uses her own human creativity to cut herself down and complete the mission. This flaw of the heart is an important theme throughout the rest of the film and it brings the title of the film into perspective. Heart of Stone, referring to Stone's heart being what inevitably saves the world, not the AI heart. In the film, Stone is undercover as a rookie MI6 agent when her team comes in contact with a new threat, a young but incredibly skilled hacker named Kea, who is on a mission to steal the heart and prevent the Charter from being able to make decisions that affect everyone else's lives. In their quest to stop Kea, there are a few twists and turns, as it is revealed that Stone is not the only member of the team who is lying about who she is, and it leaves her alone in her mission to convince Kea to stop for the greater good. Now, let's take a look at some small details in the film. First, music has significant meaning in Heart of Stone. In the very few moments of character development that we receive, Stone's MI6 team often bickers about music. The agent's music taste definitely fit with their personalities as the fun-loving Bailey enjoys 80s music, and when Yang gets to play her songs, we hear Lizzo's Juice, which is a fast-paced pop song perfectly fitting to Yang's strong and enthusiastic energy. As for Parker, he has an interesting taste in music. Having the disposition of a charming or elegant and mysterious man, he prefers more cultured and old-fashioned classical music. When the ox is in his hands, he plays Fado Portuguese by Amalia Rodriguez. This is also an interesting choice of song, as the Fado genre arose in Lisbon, Portugal in the 1820s, Lisbon also being the city in which Stone breaks her cover to save her team's lives and where Parker reveals himself to be in league with Kea. Additionally, the suit of cards in the Charter are somewhat thoughtfully placed around the world to reflect four global superpowers, with the hard suit being in the United Kingdom, the diamonds in the United States, the clubs in China, and the spades in Russia, we see that even in the world that the Charter runs secretly, the same areas have an incredible amount of influence over the entirety of the world. That being said, the Charter supposedly holds itself to a standard of only having agents that have no allegiance to a specific country, but I could still see the Charter having bias in protecting their four superpowers, not necessarily because they have loyalty to the countries, but because they do not want the areas that their major bases are in to be compromised. Also, there are a lot of similarities to the Bond films in Heart of Stone. The opening credits of the film itself are animated with lively music just like the Bond film's opening credits. We also see similarities in the code names for the agents of the Bond movies and of Heart of Stone, with MI6 agent in the Bond films having numbers and Charter agents having playing cards. Specifically, the playing card theme of the Charter reminds me of the 2006 Bond movie Casino Royale. Finally, the opening credits foreshadow many of the later scenes in the film. Following the spy movie cliché of foreshadowing the movie's biggest action scenes in the opening credits, we see Stone in a tense motorcycle chase, jumping off a cliff into a lagoon, and falling from the sky, foreshadowing her brush with death after the blimp carrying the heart explodes. Now, for my final review of the film, 
While I love a good mystery or spy movie, Heart of Stone wasn't anything special. It was decent and worth the watch if you're interested in a simpler film, but the writing felt a bit bland or unnatural and the acting wasn't super immersive or believable. The storyline wasn't very original as well, with the powerful tech, top secret spy societies, and backstabbing agents. So I'd say giving a James Bond film, the Kingsman movies, or even Netflix's Red Notice a watch would be a more enjoyable use of time. With that said, Heart of Stone wasn't a pain for me to watch. I still enjoyed it, though there were a couple of scenes that had me looking at my laptop and, uh, questioning everything. And while most of the characters felt shallow and unrelatable, the writers did do a good job of getting me to feel for one of their characters, Bailey. It felt kind of weird how developed Bailey was compared to Yang, but showing Bailey and his relationship with his cat warmed my heart as well as his relationship with his niece, whom he was buying a birthday gift for. They were wholesome little details that I enjoyed and wish had been included with the other characters. Those details definitely made it sad when he was killed and brought those emotions up again when Stone went back to care for his cat and to drop off his niece's birthday gift. But aside from that, the rest of the film triggered really no emotional response for me. I wasn't ever really on the edge of my seat during the action and suspense scenes or incredibly eager to know what would happen next after a twist. That being said, the action scenes, twists, and plot weren't bad, just kind of generic. Overall, I'd give the film a 2.5 out of 5, because even with the generic vibes, it was still different enough to be enjoyable to me. The opening credit scene was pretty cool, and the action scenes weren't bad. I do wish they had developed the characters a bit more and made their interactions feel a bit more believable, but other than that, and a lack of originality, that honestly kind of feels intentional in some areas, it was enjoyable to watch. Anyways, thank you all for watching today's video. Let me know if you have anything to add or if there's a film you'd like me to take a look at next. As always, be good people, love others, and love yourselves. Peace.